This video is designed to be interactive. That means that you will watch and at different points pause the video in order to practice new skills. After each pause, we'll continue with new content. The time points of these pauses are listed for you in the video description in case you have to start this video over at any point. All practice activities will be done within a worksheet that you'll need to download from the online course. We also recommend pausing the video if you need more time to engage with any of the text content shown. Take a few moments now to read over the three learning objectives of this video. In order to reach these learning objectives, we'll cover the following topics and questions. First, we'll talk about what a relationship practice is and why are they important. During this first part of the video, we'll discuss the central tenets of models of family engagement and the significant impacts they can have on the ability of families to take charge of the transition planning process. This will give us a foundation for the second part of this video, where we talk about specific effective family engagement practices. We'll cover the sub-indicators of family engagement within the TED framework. We'll also talk about evidence-based practices, strategies, and tools that we can use to support family engagement. Finally, we'll look at some examples of what works according to youth and families. Families play a primary role in supporting the major areas of life for transition age youth. This includes affection, self-esteem, daily care and independent living skills, economic and job growth, socialization in the community, recreation in the community, and seeking more education and training. In families of youth with disabilities, other members of that family often manage and advocate formal supports and services by serving as the gatekeeper, negotiator, monitor of quality, and sometimes the complainant. For individuals with disabilities, the additional types of support that are sometimes needed to live successfully in the community require families to assume and maintain unique and critical roles that begin in childhood and last throughout an individual's life. Family engagement means doing with families, not doing for families. At the core of our work is fostering relationships between youth, families, and stakeholders across the community, which may be the school, agency, and beyond. These relationships are founded on mutual respect, trust, and person-centered planning. Through relationships, we build community partnerships with libraries, health centers, schools and school districts, agencies, various nonprofits, sources of economic support, the workforce, higher education, human services, faith-based organizations, businesses and employers, and a broad range of other stakeholders. These organizations can respond to families' interests and needs. They can connect families with outside resources. They can also encourage parent and family engagement in their youth's learning and use community strengths and needs assessment data to guide collaboration practices. These connections improve family capacity to take active leadership roles in transition planning by providing them with support to barriers that might impact their engagement, such as knowledge, time, and access. Partnerships can also promote successful transition for youth and families from one service setting to another over time, for example, when multiple services are needing during the same time period. It's from a strong foundation of relationships between youth, families, and stakeholders that we learn about and draw upon the transition hopes, dreams, goals, strengths, and challenges of families. We then design transition plans that include practices and programs to directly align with what families want and need. In doing so, we support family engagement in transition planning and related transition activities, family well-being, positive parent-youth partnerships, families as lifelong learners, educators, advocates, and leaders, and lastly, family connections to peer and community supports. As transition stakeholders, we often experience the challenge of ineffective school, family, and community partnerships. This can be characterized by a lack of opportunities for school and program staff to build the capacity for partnerships to support transition goals, and also a lack of opportunities for families to contribute to that capacity building. In planning to address this challenge, we first look at opportunity conditions, which may be process-oriented, such as how we provide programs, services, and supports, as well as organizational conditions that support or inhibit the impact of these processes. 
With a full understanding of our opportunity conditions, we can then go on to making policy and program goals. Our goals here are to build and enhance the capacity for staff and families in the four C areas, which are capabilities, connections, cognition, and confidence. From these policy and program goals, we then hope to achieve the following family and staff capacity outcomes. So that is effective family school partnerships supporting student achievement and school improvement, where school and program staff can honor and recognize family funds of knowledge, connect family engagement to student learning, and create welcoming, inviting cultures. Through this, we also have families who can negotiate multiple roles as supporters, encouragers, monitors, advocates, decision makers, and collaborators. All right, it's time for our first pause and practice activity. Please download the relationships video worksheet from the online course. Once you've done that, take some time to reflect and answer the following two questions. First, how do you know that families are engaged and not just present? What are the actions, behaviors, and attitudes of family members when they are actively engaged in transition planning? Then, share two to three practices, programs, supports, or approaches that transition stakeholders might use to support family engagement in transition planning. So what might be done and what would be the connections, supports, or outcomes that would result from it? Please pause the video now and take some time to work on this activity. Once you've completed the activity, return to the video and play from this point. Ideally, family engagement in transition planning includes meeting families where they are, creating welcoming and safe spaces where youth and their family are at the center of all planning and decision making, making sure that youth and their family have an active voice in the transition planning process, listening to their hopes, dreams, goals, and needs, and involving them in developing those goals and needs for life after high school. Family engagement takes a village. At the school level, we can develop family and community engagement plans with the active participation of families, students, and community members. We can establish parent resource rooms and offices to be the hub of support for students and family needs. We can complete a beginning of the school year family engagement survey, distribute that at the start, midpoint, and at the end of the year. We can then share those results and make action plans based upon them to improve family engagement at the school, agencies, and throughout the community. We can provide opportunities for parents to join committees that set school policies, goals, and evaluations of programs related to supporting transition. We can sponsor workshops that distribute information to families that assist them in understanding how they can support, advocate, and connect with supports for academic, social, emotional, behavioral, and career development for their young people. Schools can also collaborate with community partners that support parent training and access to support services. Districts can develop and consistently update action plans for family and community engagement. They can also provide ongoing training for teachers, administrators, and parents on family engagement strategies. Districts can provide resources to schools about how to partner with organizations that can help schools with family engagement. Local school boards can adopt a policy of acknowledging the critical importance of family engagement in increasing the achievement of young people. Districts can devote a portion of in-service time in the fall to build knowledge about partnerships, and this may include how to welcome and engage students and families and how to enhance staff skills in reaching out to families in a way that is strength-based, collaborative, and supports families where they are. Finally, districts can take a district-wide approach to professional development programming that addresses strategies for culturally relevant engagement in every school. Community-level efforts to support family engagement can include encouraging cultural organizations to work in collaborations with schools. This work might include 
engaging important people in the community who can share clear messages with families about the value of engagement and how to bridge the gap between their culture and the school culture. Community agencies can collaborate with schools to educate and support parents in sharing power and decision-making that impacts policies, programs, and supports that affect their young people. Community agencies can partner with schools to provide social work and case management to support families. Community advocacy groups can partner with families, school districts, and schools to build links with businesses and partnerships to educate businesses about the importance of family engagement and what they can do to help. At the state level, supporting family engagement might include the state supporting schools and districts in developing annual family engagement plans. States may develop statewide systems of support to districts and schools for providing technical assistance and information on how to support family engagement in their communities. States may develop partnerships between districts, schools, and partnering organizations. They can also develop and distribute a toolkit of shared resources based on research and best practices for family engagement. Lastly, states can design and make available model policies for supporting parent collaboration at the district and school levels that in turn support collaboration between advocates, parents, and the school. An informed family engagement plan is the result of organizing a comprehensive set of inputs or resources, actions which can be program events and strategies, identified stakeholders and outcomes, that in turn facilitate the authentic and sustained engagement of all families in the academic, social, emotional, and career-focused development of their children or youth. Teams can create a logic model, which is a picture of how a program is intended to work and includes the main components of how they should relate together on the short and long-term goals of families and community stakeholders. The informed family engagement plan is the result of professional capacity meeting the families where they are and understanding the family's capacity, as well as how that capacity affects the nature and magnitude of the family's potential engagement with a team. So why engage all families? Well, when family engagement is directly related to student learning, it is more likely to have a positive impact on successful course completion and thus student achievement. This engagement can and should take place at home and in the community, not just at school. In order for the IFEP development and implementation process to be successful in truly and authentically engaging families, teams must ensure that they are welcoming every family, supporting two-way communication, sharing power, supporting student success, collaborating with the community, and speaking for every young person. Ideally, family information sharing activities support trusting relationships between family, school, and agency personnel that help some evidence-based practices that can support family information sharing activities include providing relevant information about transition planning to parents through a variety of means, including written, face-to-face, -face, community-based training, such as the Autism Society or other nonprofit efforts at each stage of the transition planning process, such as the transition from middle school to high school and from high school to adult life. We can also provide multiple options for involvement, such as involvement in the IEP planning process and flexible IEP meeting times, as well as alternative ways to obtain input from families about the transition planning process. 
We can establish a welcoming atmosphere in the school by developing a system of ongoing communication and interaction through use of email, notes home, home visits, regularly scheduled meetings, in addition to IEP meetings. We can provide frayers, brochures, workshops, and other means of information sharing to educate parents about adult services and post-school supports in the community, such as vocational rehabilitation, mental health support services, post-secondary education options, and other employment options. We can provide staff training on culturally competent transition planning practices, which may include recognizing and honoring differences such as ethnic, socioeconomic, and the values of the family. We can actively engage parents in interagency transition councils. We can also collaborate with families to identify how the school and family guardians can support students in achieving their desired post-school goals. And finally, we can use transition assessment results with parents so that the parents can use that information to provide training to their children at home and in the community, as well as support identifying natural supports that will work best for them and their children. At the heart of peer-to-peer -peer family support is family members and young people sharing their experiences and relevant information with each other about future planning through networking, invited speakers, and local task force. Peer-to-peer -peer family support should result in youth and their family being at the center of planning for the future, also having opportunities to share information with one another about best practices in their communities, and being educated about community, educational, employment, and financial resources through experiences with other families and young people. Peer-to-peer -peer family support relies on families to share and learn from one another. These groups may be formal or informal, are often led by families, and may have differencing structures including the frequency of meetings, how they meet, either person or online, where they meet, the agendas or goals covered, and the resources that might be shared. The focus of the group is on the self-disclosed experiences of families and youth with disabilities in a safe and trusting place. Families focus on the outcomes they desire, and they link each other with others who may be beneficial in joint problem solving. Ideally, Family Respite provides families with a space to communicate their thoughts and feelings. It involves trusted partnerships with the school and the community, and it happens at times and in places that are best for families. Family Respite should include safe and supportive care for youth and their siblings while their parents, guardians, and caregivers are taking a break. Family Respite should be regular, individualized, and help families to engage with community supports and opportunities to engage in leisure and other hobbies that they may not otherwise have time to engage with. So what are the most common family respite opportunities and service models? Well, there are associate families, which are individuals and families in the community who welcome a young person with special needs into their home for a brief period of time. During this time, the young person spends time with that family and develops a relationship with that new extended family. This provides support for that young person's family and provides a nurturing relationship for them. All the care needed by that young person during their stay is provided by the family as well as new experiences for learning and engaging in the community. Another type of respite model is called community respite. This is where a respite provider, often called a CHAP worker, which stands for Community Helpers for Active Participation, is matched with a family and a young person. During that time spent with the young person, the respite provider assists the young person to participate in community-based activities. A third type of respite model are sibling support groups. Sibling support groups are social groups where siblings of students and young people with disabilities come together to have fun, participate in games and crafts, and share their experiences in a fun way that unpacks some of that potential emotional weight from the challenges and opportunities they have experienced with their family.
All right, it's time for your second and final pause and practice activity of this video. Please take out your family engagement video worksheet and answer the following questions. Once you've completed these questions, which are also on the worksheet for your reference, you'll be completed with this video.